All right, we're working in chapter three, section one, and we are factoring quadratics that take the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, we already did x squared plus bx plus c when the a is one, and we don't really have to worry about the a, but now there's gonna be a number in front of the x squared. But don't fret. We're gonna turn these into those easy ones and then turn them back into the answers that we need. We're gonna use what's called slide and divide. I'm just gonna do it a bunch of times so you can see what happens. But the name is the thing. We're gonna use slide and divide. Number one thing before we even get started with any quadratic that has an A, that is not a one, is we need to look for the greatest common factor, the GCF. You wanna factor out the GCF, the greatest common factor. First, make that thing as small as possible, then make it as easy as possible. So if we look at the one that we have here, we've got 5x squared plus 15x plus 10. If I look at those, they all have a factor of 5. 5 goes into 5, 5 goes into 15, 5 goes into 10. So what I'm going to do before I even get started is I'm going to bring a 5 out of that. I'm going to factor it out, okay? When I take and divide 5 by 5, I pull that factor away. It's kind of like I got 1 times 5, and I got... So that makes my five one. I got three times five, that makes my 15 one. And I got two times five, that makes my 10 one. If I take the fives away, what I'm left with is one and three and two. So I'll have one X squared plus three X plus two left over. If I wanna double check, I can always distribute it back in and make sure that it multiplies back up to the original, which it does. So now I have just a plain old quadratic where a is one. Those are the easy ones like we did last time. So keep the five outside, but this time break it into our two parentheses. Put our x in each one of them. If we use the patterns, we see that it's a plus at the back, which means that they're the same and it's a plus sign in the middle. So we know they're both gonna be plus. So now I just have to find factors of two that add to three. Well, one times two is all the factors of two and one plus two is three. So one gets a one, one gets a two and we're done. That's how factoring out the greatest common factor can really help. It turns the problem into one of those easy ones that we did, okay? But sometimes there isn't a greatest common factor. Now they've got all these different kinds and in the book they do it a very different way. They do what's called guess and check and that's what I had to learn when I learned how to do this. You just do all of the combinations possible of the factors of the first thing and the factors of the last thing that multiply together and then add to be the middle thing. But there's a way easier way. And what we're gonna do is slide and divide and reduce. You should always reduce, okay? So here's how this works. 4x squared plus 13x plus three. First, Check for the GCF, four and 13 and three. Nothing goes into four and 13 and three. So there is no greatest common factor. We can't make it easier using the GCF. So what we're gonna do is we're going to slide the four to the back and rewrite it. X squared plus 13X plus three times four. We're gonna treat those right next to each other like a times and it's gonna be 12. This is our slide portion. Okay. Now we're going to factor it like normal because now we have just a 1x squared. So each one gets an x. If we look at the pattern, it's a plus sign. The middle's a plus, so we know they're both going to be plus. We need factors of 12 that add to 13. Let's see. 1 times 12. Oh, there it is. 1 times 12. Now, remember it's slide and it's divide. So if you slide it, you must then divide it, slide and divide. If you can reduce it, you should. One over four doesn't reduce, so it stays x plus one over four. 12 divided by four, however, turns into a three. And we're almost done. If we want to know the true factors, we've got one more move. What we don't want is that fraction there, because I know most of you don't like to use them, and they're just not as easy. So here's a trick move. 
Here's the way the math works always, trust me. But all you have to do with this fraction is just take this four and go whoop, move it right in front. And we're done. Slide it to the back, multiply the back and the front and the constant together, gives you a basic x squared plus bx plus c problem. Factor it as normal. Don't forget, if you slide it, you must divide it and reduce it. Okay. Make sure that everything multiplies back together. 4x times x makes x squared. 4x times 3 is 12x. 1x, 1 times x is 1x. 12x and 1x is 13x. That's the middle. And 1 times 3 makes 3. Everything worked out good. So let's try another one. 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. Nothing goes into 3 and 7 and 2, so no greatest common factor, so we're going to slide to the back. Rewrite it. x squared minus 7x plus 6. Now we want factors of 6 that add to 7. Plus sign at the back, minus in the middle. They're both going to be minus. So 1 times 6. Oh, that adds to 7. 1 and 6. Very good. Once you slide it, you must divide it. Okay. As I see how these reduce, 3 goes into 6 2 times, so I know that this one's going to become x minus 2. 3 doesn't go into 1, so I'm just going to put it out in front. It's going to be 3x minus 1. And we're done. Wash, rinse, repeat. Keep going. Let's look at this one. 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. If we try to take a greatest common factor, nothing goes into 2 and 5 and 7. 2 is even, 5 and 7 are odd and Prime, they got nothing in them. Slide to the back. X squared minus 5x minus 14. Factors of 14 that subtract to 5. Well, here we go. We know they're going to be different signs. You can put the signs in early or you can put them in after, whatever you want to do. But we need factors of 14 that subtract to 5. So we got 1 and 14 that subtracts to 13. We got 2 and 7, that subtracts to 5. I need it to be negative, so the sign goes with the bigger number. The 7 is negative, the 2 is positive. Now, I slid it, so I must divide it. It's the only way to make it rhyme. And then reduce. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 doesn't go into 7, so we're just going to throw it up in front. 2x minus 7, and those are our factors. Ooh, it's a negative number. You can take the negative out early, or you can just take it with it. It doesn't really matter. Okay? Drop it to the back. Slide to the back. So you got x squared minus 8x minus 20. Make your factor parentheses. Put an x in each. One's going to be plus. One's going to be minus. Factors of 20, that subtract to 8. Well, we've got 1 and 20, which subtracts to 19. we got 2 and 10, which subtracts to 8. And the 10 needs to be negative because the sign in the middle is negative. If we slide it, we must divide it divide by negative 4. X. Ooh, let's see how that one goes. That goes a little different. When we reduce this one, we get X minus 1 half. And we reduce this one, x plus, doesn't go nicely, but 2 goes into both. 2 goes into 10 five times, 2 goes into two, 4 two times. The negative negative is what made it a plus sign. Uh, the 2s didn't go away, so we're just going to move them in front. So 2x minus 1 times 2x plus 5. And if we want to, and I'll switch colors so you can see it, we can foil back together. Remember, foil... First, outer, inner, last. Okay, so we do first times first. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Uh oh, I see we got a problem. 2x times 5x is 10x. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x, and negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. If we add the like terms together, we get 4x squared 
plus 8x minus 5. Something isn't right. Look what happened. We lost that negative 1. We should have treated it like a greatest common factor. You want a to be a positive. So way back up this way, we should have pulled out the negative and changed those signs. Okay, way back up there. There should be a negative out there and the signs should be different. We should have just brought the 4 back. And so we just got that negative 1 out there. So there should have been a negative 1. It should have been a negative 1. Then there should have been negative 1. And that would have changed all our signs all the way through because this would have been a minus. Or, yeah, well, it would have been a plus. This would have still been a minus. But now... We're looking at different things, okay? So really, we should work that a different way. So let's look at it in blue. This is what happens if you don't factor out the greatest common factor. You'll lose it in the slide and divide. So if we have negative 4x squared minus 8x plus 5, Factor out the negative before you start. Even though nothing else goes into 4 and 8 and 5, you, the 4 and the 8 have common things, but the 5 doesn't. Factor that out. You take out the negative, it's going to change everybody's sign. Now we're going to do the slide and divide. So we got that negative 1, it just hangs out there. That's all it does. Okay? So we got 4x, nope, not the 4. I lied. We got the x squared plus the 8x minus the 20. We're going to break these apart. So we're going to put an x in each. One's plus, one's minus. We need factors of 20 that subtract to 8. 1 and 20 subtracts to 19. 2 and 10 subtracts to 8. That's what we need. It needs to be this way. This time the 10 is positive to make it match the positive 8. If you slide it, you must... Divide it. Negative 1 stays. X plus 5 halves. Reduce it by 2. Factor of 2 comes out. 1 half. You got to take those down. If you don't reduce them, you're going to end up with too big a numbers. If we would have multiplied the 4 and the 4 and the 2 times the 10, we'd have a huge number at the back. So you have to reduce it. And now our little 2's come up in front. We got negative 1. We got X Wait, 2x plus 5, we got 2x minus 1. Those are going to get us back to the right place. So you can see one of our factors was good, but we had to factor that negative out of the other. Okay, Got to have that negative in there to change those signs. See, we still get the same ones, but that negative one is what's going to get us back to the original. Okay. Back to the original. So be careful with ones like those. Take it back to red. Let's try more. Have a pause right here. Try some of these. Try all of these. I'm going to burn through them all here in just a second. So take a pause. Try them yourself. Okay. Here we go. Let's look at number one. We got 8x squared minus 56x plus 48. Let's see. Does anything go into all of them? Well, 8 goes into all of them. Ooh, I'm going to pull 8 out of there. So I get x squared minus 7x plus 6. Oh, that made it way easier. 8 stays out there. I don't even have to slide and divide. It's just already ready to go. Both going to be minus factors of 6. that add to 7 is 6 and 1. And I'm good. Bam. Okay. As I go through these, I'll do them in different colors so you can see the difference. Let's look at number 2. 14x squared plus 31x plus 15. Oh, goodness. Let's see. Does anything go into the 3 doesn't go into all of them. 5 doesn't go into all of them. So we're stuck. Look at how big that one gets. Let's move it back here. 14. x squared plus 31x plus whatever the heck that is. Let's see, do we have a calculator out here? Oh, look at that, there's some Desmos. And we're gonna do that, 15 times 14. 210, we're at 
210. And we need factors of 210 that are going to add to 31. Well, let's see. We need to add them together and to get to 31. Oh, I see a nice little set. What if we just start at 21, 10 times 21? Ooh, that makes 31, so let's break it. X, X. Sometimes if it's a zero, just take it off of there. That's a good starting point. You can always get yourself a good starting point, then you can go backwards and forwards. Like I could see if nine goes into it. Let's see, nine would go into it. I could figure that out. So let's see, draw that back out here. And let's see, 210 divided by nine. Nope, doesn't. Eight, nope, seven. Seven goes 30 times, so I could do seven. Let's see, how does not 210 not work? Oh, not by nine, but by three. Seven and 30, okay. Let's see, six, six goes 35. Five goes 42. You could always go that way. You could say, okay, what about 11? Nope, 12, oop, that's too many. Nope, 13. Uh, nope, 14, we needed 14, it should have been 15, there we go, 16, nope, 17, come on, delete, there we go, nope, 18, nope, 19, nope, 20, nope, 21, okay, 20, no, 21, come on, delete is not working, fat fingers, it gives you 10, okay, so we're back around to the horn, we, we crossed over, we know we, we've done that many. Okay, so we know it's those. So let's use 21 and 10. So plus 20, plus 10 I'll do first, and then plus 21. If you slide it, you must divide it. Divide by 14. Well, 14 doesn't go into 10, but 2 goes into both. That's an eraser. X plus 5 over 7. And let's see, 14 doesn't go into 21, but 7 goes into both. 3 over 2. And you just put what's in front. 7x plus 5, 2x plus 3. Goes just like that. Let's try number 3. 2x squared minus 7x plus 5. Nothing goes into all of them. I think we did this one already, but let's go ahead and do it again. Times 2, x squared minus 7x plus 10. Factors of 10 that add to negative 7. Well, 1's plus 1's minus. Ooh, we're gonna be able to do that one. Let's see, two times five is 10. Did I write it down right? Yep, we did. We want a negative seven. Ooh, they're both the same, that's the problem. The pattern is real, both minus. One times 10, two times five. Two and five makes seven, divided by two. Two goes into two, so I get an x minus one. Two doesn't go into five and it doesn't reduce, so two x minus five. Just throw that two in front right there. There's my answer. See, I don't know if I can squeeze the fourth one on there, so let's go big eraser. Na, 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 na. Number four. 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Yeah, no greatest common factors. 3 ruined it. So let's slide it to the back. X squared minus 14x plus 24. We need factors of 24 that add to negative 14. Well, they're just both going to be negative. So let's see. 1 and 24. That doesn't do it. 2 plus 12. Oh, there we go. 2 and 12. Divide it by 3. 3 doesn't go into 2, so it's going to be 3x minus 2. You just slide it in front. 3 does go into 12, so it'll be x minus 4. Let's try number 5. 4x squared minus 19x minus 5. That 19 and that 5 throws it off, so we're going to throw it to the back. Slide to the back. x squared minus 19x minus 20. Factors of 20 that subtract to 19, 1 and 20, subtracts to 19. Which one needs to be negative? The big number. 20 goes back here, 1 goes there. If you slide it, you must divide it. 4 doesn't go into 1, so slide it in front. 4x plus 1 does go into 20, x minus 5.
and they go just like that. Let's look at six and seven. Back to red. Let's go six. Six x squared minus x minus 12. The one x throws it off, so slide to the back makes it six. X squared minus x minus 72. We need factors of 72 that subtract to negative one. So we got one and 72, two and 36, three goes. And let's see, three goes. How many times? I know it does. It goes in twice to that and four, so 24 times. Four goes 18 times. Five doesn't go. Six goes 12 times. Still not subtracting to one. Seven doesn't go. That'd be 70 and 77. Eight goes nine times. We're around the horn and eight and nine subtract to a one. I need the nine to go with the negative and the eight to go with the positive. If you slide it, you got to divide it. Six doesn't go into eight, but two goes into both. I get X and uh, two thirds. And I get X three goes into both here. Three over two. Put that in front, put that in front. Three X plus two. And 2x plus, oh, minus. Keep your signs right. Minus 3. And there she goes. These have a little bit more work to them, and the bigger ones are a little harder to do. Sometimes you got to make that entire list. Uh, I'll show you another feature. Let's see. If you have the graphing calculator, and let me go back to my notes here, and I can just pull that up on the side right here. If you have the graphing calculator, you can go into your y equals and you can type in the thing that you are trying to figure out factors for. So for instance, if I wanted to do, I just tapped y equals and I'm going to do 72 and I want it to be on top of the fraction. So I'm going to do alpha y equals and I'm going to pick the n over d and I'm just going to stick 72 up there and it doesn't like it, but that's okay. And then right next to the alpha button is your variable button. So if you push that, it'll throw an X in there. Then we're gonna look at the table of values. So we're gonna go over to the uh, top right corner, one back to the left, and it's a table button. And if I look at the table now, I can see factors that work. One times 72, two times 36, three times 24, four times 18, six times 12, eight times nine, nine times eight, and we're around the horn. We've got the whole list right there. So we can use the graphing calculator to help us out as well if we can't think our way through most of them. Okay, so let's see, that was six. Let's try seven. Let's see, negative two y squared minus five y minus three. Remember, we don't have anything in common with 2 and 5 and 3. They're all prime, but we can take a negative 1 out of there and change all those signs so that all of our slide and dividing works. Now slide the 2 to the back. Negative 1 stays out there, and we got x, that's supposed to be squared, plus 5y plus 6. Now we got factors of 6 that add to 5. Well, 1 and 6 make 7. 2 and 3 is the other set, so it's got to be the 2 and the 3. And then you got to, if you slide it, you must divide it. Negative 1. And we're going to go with 2x. Nope, we don't even need to put it forward. And here's why. 2 divides by 2 becomes a 1. 2 doesn't go into 3, so we're going to throw the 2 in front. Leave the 3 in back. We don't have any fractions in our answer. Works just like that. Now let's look at 8 and 9. And then all we got is a weird old word problem. For those of you that want to try a challenging type problem. So 8, negative 5, that's supposed to be m squared. Ugh, that just looks bad. Let's try that again. Negative 5, m squared, plus 6m, minus 1. We got that negative out in front. We can't have that, so we're going to take that negative off. So now it's 5m squared, minus 6m, same sign changes, plus 1 sign changes. Then we're going to slide to the back. m squared minus 6m plus 5. Factors. 
Each one gets an M. They're both going to be minus. Factors of 5 that add to 6. 1 and 5, and that's prime. So that's it, 1 and 5. Then divide. Don't forget, if you slide it, you must divide it. 5 doesn't go into 1, so it's going to stay. And we're just going to throw it in front. 5 does go into 5. It goes once. We're done. Last one, number nine, negative three x squared minus x plus two. Factor out that negative one. Change all those signs. Slide to the back. Negative one times x, that's supposed to be squared, plus x minus six. Factors of six that subtract to positive one, one and six subtracts to 5, 2 and 3 subtracts to 1, 3 goes in the plus, 2 goes in the minus, and we don't forget to divide. If we slide, we got to divide x plus 1 and add 3, throw it in front, x minus 2. Got it. That's all nine of them. Okay, some of them a little tough, got to do a little thinking, but that's all right. It's good for you. stretches your mind. Now, the last thing is, is as we get into solving, you can only solve equations. So instead of just an expression, now we're going to throw an equal sign on there. And we're going to use what's called the zero product property. And what this is, product, remember, means multiply. So the zero multiply property. If you multiply anything by a zero, then it's zero. So as we factor these, if we take the quadratic and set it equal to zero, then as long as the first parenthesis, for instance, the A part of this thing, or the second parenthesis, the B part of this thing. As long as either one of them are zero, then the whole thing becomes zero. So we can figure out what numbers make the first parenthesis turn into a zero and the second parenthesis turn into a zero. We know the solution, the solve, the answer of the quadratic. So here's a real life problem. The length of a rectangular game reserve, oh, they're rectangle, is one mile longer than twice the width. Okay, so we know width is something, and it's one mile longer, so you're going to add one, then twice the width. That's what they're saying in that first sentence. They're giving us a setup of what it looks like. They told us W for width, and then they told us the other side is two times it plus one. The area of the reserve is 55 square meters, so oops, I didn't want that. The area equals 55 meters squared. What is the width of the reserve? Well, we want to know what W is. We want to solve for W. Okay, well, we have one side and we have the other. And area is figured, area equals length times width. So our area is going to be equal to 2W plus 1 times W. So 55 should be equal to 2W plus 1 times W. And what I find interesting about this problem is they create an equation that doesn't need to be solved quadratically. Well, a little bit, okay? So we're going to move this in. So we got 55 equals 2w squared plus w. Now it says we have to get it set equal to zero, and then we have to make each one turn into a zero. We want it like this up here, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now our zero is going to be on a weird side because of the way I set it up, but we're going to subtract 55 from both sides. And that's going to give us zero equals 2w squared plus w minus 50. And then we have to factor it. Now this stays 0 equals. We're going to slide to the back times 2. So w squared plus w minus 110. We got w and 1, 
W and the other, and they need to be opposite signs. So we need to get it to one. If it has a zero, a good starting place is always 10 times that front piece. And look at that, their difference by one. So I would throw my 11 with the plus sign. So it's bigger number, goes with the sign in the middle. 10 goes to the back. Don't forget to divide by two. Okay, I'm gonna race uh, over here so I have some more room to work. Two goes into 10. So we got zero equals W plus 11 over two. And we've got W minus five. So here's what we have. We're gonna solve for W. Either one of these, consider this to be A. Oh, we did A and green, I'll do it with green, let's see. Consider this to be A and consider this one to be B. If either A or B turns into a zero, then it makes the whole thing zero and makes it true. So what I wanna do first is I wanna do zero equals W plus 11 over two. And I wanna solve for W. I subtract 11 over two. So negative 11 over two equals W. So we're saying the width is negative 11 halves or negative five and a half. Well, you can't have a negative width because that's not real. Can't do negative space. So it's not that one. So it's gotta be the other one. So if we take zero and we set the W minus five equal to it. Notice all we did was just take this down here. And all we did was take this down here. They're both still set equal to zero because as long as either one is zero, we get the right solution. So here I'm gonna add five to both sides to get W by itself and we get five equals W and that makes sense because you can have a side that is five meters long. The other side, not that it asked for it, but if we plug the five in, five times two is 10, 10 plus one is 11. So the other side has to be 11 meters long. And that's how you solve it algebraically. There is one more question if you wanna try it. Let's see if the area of the reserve is 136 square miles, how wide is the reserve? So remember length times width equals area. So we had 2w plus one times w equals 136 this time because that's my area. So we distribute this to both. So 2w squared plus w equals 136. Set it equal to zero. 2w squared plus w minus 136 equals zero. Not a greatest common factor because of that pesky one in the middle there, but we're gonna slide to the back. W squared plus w minus, let's see, I'm gonna do that one over here. Quit, back to the middle. Let's see, 136 times two, 272. I might have to do factors of that one. Equals zero, factor it, W plus, W minus. I know that there's gonna be a plus minus because the difference in the back and I'm even gonna use my little uh, trick. Come on now, there we go. I'll go back to my Y equals and I'm just gonna change it to 272 on the top. Go back to my table. One and 272, we gotta get numbers that are close to each other. Oh, look at that, 16 and 17, boom. Needed it one away. So 17 is the big, so we get positive. 16 is the small. If we slide a two to the back, we gotta divide a two at the bottom. W plus 17 halves. And W minus eight equals zero. If I take the first one, I'm gonna end up with a negative number, which is a no-go. So I'm just gonna take W minus eight equals zero. Add eight to both sides, W equals eight. The width would then be eight miles. So there you go. That's how to solve quadratic equations and that's how to slide and divide and solve equations where the A is 